Hey everybody, it's Jay from Natural Health Supply, and I got really sick. So I thought it was an opportunity to talk about it because I feel like the zapper pulled me out of it. So I'm gonna zap while I tell you this story because I still don't feel 100%. But the thing is, I just turned 60. So I turned 60 years old, and then I got bit by a tick. So, out for a hike in Maine. Maine's got more ticks per capita than any tick land on earth. So I get bit by a tick. I don't even know it. So supposedly I got bit by a tick, but I got really sick. I got a super fever. The fever was like crazy. And then, I, then the dry heaves began. So for three days without sleep, I just was in the shower, dry heaving foam that I thought I was gonna like literally asphyxiate Hendrix style and, and just constant foam. So my body was just removing this, this foam for three days and I couldn't sleep at all. And I got concerned, my wife got concerned because I was like hallucinating and getting strange without sleep. So the sleep depth was starting to hit me really hard and my eyes were all bloody red from dry heaving. So my eyes had swollen up and I started seeing double which really added to the weirdness of like the hallucinations and stuff. So eventually after three days of just that harrowing journey, I zapped and I fell asleep. I could finally like get enough, get myself together enough to zap. And then I completely fell asleep and fell into a strange fevered dream. But the dream was magnificent. I ended up in this hallway of comic books, and I love comic books, so I was in this hallway walking around going, wow, this is a cool comic book collection, and I start looking at all these comics, and I come to a door, and I open the door, and inside the room is this small child who I call little brother in this dream, and it's me as a child, and I sit, and the little, little, little brother goes, oh my gosh, it's been so long. You want to play a game of crisscross? Well, yeah, I did want to play a game of crisscross because I have a recurring dream that I can never remember. And it's I playing a board game called crisscross, and the board game teaches you about life and philosophy, and it even like just helps makes me feel like with this knowledge you could save the world. So every time I wake up from this dream of crisscross, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could save the world with this. This would help people. This would help people like think things through. I love crisscross. And I immediately forget the dream. I know that crisscross is like black and yellow. I know the feelings that it gives me. And I never see who I'm playing with. But this time, little brother invites me to sit down and play crisscross. And I ask him, I go, little brother, how come when I wake up, this dream escapes me and I can't create crisscross in the real world? And he looks at me, he's like, then you would never come here and play crisscross with me. You would like create it in your world and then the whole world would have it, but you'd forget me. You wouldn't come back here and play crisscross with me. So I felt sorry for little brother and I hugged him and I said, it's okay. Crisscross is just between you and me. And I'll come here and read your comics and hang out with you. And, and it felt really kind of good, like something was resolved in my life. So my wife comes and taps on my shoulder. She wants to take my temperature. So she's got a temperature gun and she shoots my forehead. And the next thing you know, I'm like topping 103. She's like, I think you need to go to the hospital. And I look up and I say like, no, I'm just starting to enjoy this. I, I, wanna, I wanna play more crisscross with little brother. And my wife is like, enjoying this? You're not supposed to enjoy this. It's like a dangerous fever, you've been vomiting. How are you enjoying this? I'm like, I don't know, I'm learning a lot about myself. And then she's like, that's it, you're going to the hospital. So I put down the zapper and we go to the hospital. And they, and they take a, a urine sample and they take some blood, but the blood's gonna take three days. And then they're like, you know, we wanna keep you here because you got weird readings. You have no bacterial load at all in your body. And I'm like, oh, that's because I probably zapped before I came here. They're like, yeah, you're definitely sick. And I'm like, well, I haven't slept for three days and I vomited for three days. I'm haggard. So they give me like some really powerful antibiotic because I refuse to spend the night in the hospital because 
the lights were killing me, the noise was killing me. I was never gonna rest that way. Hospitals stressed me out. So I was like, I will actually rest better at home in my space, set up for my comfort. And this place set up for my discomfort. The lights alone give me a migraine. So I just didn't wanna spend the night in a place that makes me feel worse. And home is home. So they gave me this massive, powerful antibiotic because they couldn't observe me. I don't know what they gave me. They sent me home with like a big Augmented. white pill. Augmentin. So I'm taking my doses of aug Augmentin. And then a few days later, the CDC calls me up and they're like, hey, you have anaplasmosis from a tick bite. And uh, we want to make sure that you're taking antibiotics. And I told them, yeah, I've almost finished my Augmentin. And they're like, oh, that's pretty powerful. That's, that's, a, that's a really powerful one. You're probably covered. So, okay, you're good to go. That'll, that'll take care of your anaplasmosis. So then the CDC went away. I'm like, God, the CDC is involved. That's, that's bizarre. And then I went to go see my general practitioner. The CDC and Penn Bay weren't really sharing information. So when Penn Bay got my blood thing, they wanted to give me another antibiotic, which was like... Doxycycline. Doxycycline. Now, when I took the doxycycline, I had all the negative side effects where they tell you to immediately stop. My double vision increased. I started having like all this like toxic reactions. And then when I looked it up, not only was I seeing double, I had to look up all the side effects of this drug while seeing double. And it was really difficult to Google all that and search. But everything said, stop this drug immediately if you're having these reactions. So I, so I was afraid. Now the CDC had already told me I'd taken enough antibiotics with the first drug. So I felt like, well, maybe the second drug is overkill since it's giving me all these negative side effects. I didn't want it to murder me because this one of the side effects was it crosses the blood brain barrier. And I felt like I was, I was freaking out. Like my brain was going to pop. I totally felt the pressure in my head. I stopped taking it and then that went away. So I feel like it was the right thing to stop taking it. But then I was just zapping. I was a little nervous because I always tell people, do what your doctor says and just zap on top of it. But I never tell people to go against your doctor's will and stop taking your drug and zap. So I was going out on a limb. So I just kept zapping. So either the first antibiotic helped kick it out and then zapping all the time got me there, but I'm feeling much better now. And so I'm really, really proud of, of my zapper because it helped me. It confused the doctors because I had no bacterial load in my charts over and over and over. So I even felt like I had to stop zapping so that they could find the germs or whatever. It was bizarre. So I, something really worked because if they cannot find a bacterial load when I'm definitely jacked up on and ill, the zapper did something kind of magnificent. And when I explained it to them, they're just like, well, just keep doing whatever you're doing because we need to get this bacterial load all the way down. And you seem to be doing it on your own with whatever wacky device you're talking about. So it's hard to explain this to my doctor because they don't know, know about it. But the zapper helped me tons with my anaplasmosis. Helped me tons and I'm convinced because I feel better every time I zap. So I'm always telling people to zap. But the thing is, I'm always super healthy. And I think getting sick really like helped me realize when I was super sick, I could not zap. I could not zap when I'm like dry heaving and retching and completely losing all of my ability and all of my muscular power. I just couldn't. I, was, I realized how difficult when you're super ill it is to even do anything for yourself. And it took me three days to even get to the point where I could zap at all. But when I finally did zap, I fell asleep. I visited a little brother, had one of the greatest epiphany dreams of my life. And I came back inspired and ready to just do it. So I don't know what happened, but little brother gave me so much hope, took so many fears away from me. I don't fear it anymore. Whatever it is. I love you. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be here. I went through something crazy and I feel like the zapper really helped. So give it a try. 
I have a one year money back guarantee. There's barely any risk. Try it for a year every time you feel bad and see if it helps you. And that's what I want. I want everyone to try it themselves and decide for themselves. Cheers. Welcome to the real world. I'll say hi to little brother for you.